Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by, giving me your precious time, watching me during my horological adventures. And this adventure is this lovely little pocket watch. Now, I don't own this, this isn't mine. It actually belongs to a, a work colleague and friend, Nathan. We got to talking one day and I told him I was into horology and he said he had a, an old pocket watch and well, would I mind taking a look? It used to run, but it uh, since it stopped. So I said, no worries, I'll uh, have a look. I'm not promising anything, but well, I'll certainly have a look for you. Now, before we, we take it apart, I'm just having a, a little nose around and I noticed there's three bears, a silver mark. Now, that's a, 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 fin a, a fineness mark, and that was a, a Swiss hall mark comprising of three bears, one small bear over two large bears. And this showed that the case was hallmarked in Switzerland after 1887. Um, this stopped, I believe it was in 1930. So this watch is around 100 years old. Now the reason for those three bears is in 1887 the British Merchandise Act introduced new requirements for imported gold and silver watch cases. So from the January the 1st 1888 they all had to carry no marks at all or be hallmarked either in British assay office or in the country of origin. The act also stipulated that there were to be no words on the watch movement or case that might imply that the, the watch had been made in Britain. Now what we are going to do is take the hands off and we'll get the movement out of the case and we can have a look at what we're dealing with. So we're not going to do anything to the case, we're going to leave that alone. Nathan happens to like the patina and so do I. So this is simply just going to be a service of the movement and to see what's wrong if there's anything and fix it if we can. That comes out the front of the case and it is a, a lovely dial. And having a little look on the internet and on eBay and things like that I'm almost tempted to, to say that this is, a, I think, a Stifer & Sons pocket watch. So I've seen quite a few of those, and I've actually ordered a donor movement, which I'm hoping is correct. And that's a Stifer & Sons, and they've got very similar dials with that gold decoration to them. And that's the dial off, along with the hour wheel and the minute wheel. I'm going to put them back into place just so I know what goes where first. I mean, this is a first for me, this particular movement. And you'll see see why a little bit later on. I'm used to pallet forks. And there isn't any in this watch movement. This is what they call a, a cylinder escapement. So as always, we'll put the dial into that dial box to keep it safe. And then off come the minute wheel and the hour wheel again. Then we can get it to a movement holder. And it is fully wound, but it's doing nothing. So we'll take the power out of the mainspring. Okay, you don't want the power to come out all at once. You know, you can do damage. And what Nathan did say to me was that he thought that when he was winding it at one point, it just kept turning, which led me to believe that the, the mainspring's gone, but the power is in that mainspring, so I've had to just take it out. 
So I don't know what exactly is going on yet. But we will take the balance out of the way. I'm just going to try and lift the, the cock and the wheel together. We can have a little look at the underside there. You can see there's a spring isn't the best, but I've mentioned before that's not my forte, and especially on this watch, I won't be doing anything with it really. When it comes to cleaning this, we will have to take the the hairspring and the balance wheel off. And to do that, you just remove that little brass pin that you can see to the top of the screen. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom in on this escape wheel. And show you how different it is to a normal, what I'd call a normal escape wheel, to what I'm used to. And can you just see the, the teeth on that escape wheel? They, they stand up. So there's no pallet fork, those teeth interact directly with the balance wheel. So we'll start taking the rest of this movement apart. And we've got a, a couple of cocks to remove and then that bridge. The jewel on that looks okay. And that little pot you see me put things in, that's just to keep everything together and to, to keep the dust off them. Yeah, there's a closer look at that uh, escape wheel. We can continue to disassemble this, starting with the, the crown wheel. They are quite grubby, they do need a clean. That's just escaped from me there, come back. Run a bit of pegwood across it. Can you see how dirty that is? And it's just good practice if you can remove, you know, solid dirt that you can see before it goes into the watch cleaner machine. That way, you can save yourself a bit of money with the the fluids. see that there it's boiling up and coming away now we can remove the the click now I really like the click spring on this this movement so you got a very small little click there and then behind it is that big beefy spring It's held in with two screws. So look at that for a click spring. I 
suppose the bonus with that is if it does go flying across the room, it'd be a bit easier to find. Now we've got to take the ratchet wheel off and this, all I can do here is use a pair of brass tweezers and pop them in the hole and, and get it started. I'm sure there is a, a purpose tool for that particular type of screw head, but my tweezers will do for now. Now these two parts on top of these wheels are, uh, are conical as well, so they are quite hard to, to pick up with your, your tweezers. Again, can you see the dirt on the main plate there? What I'm going to do is just check the play in the barrel. We can remove this cock for the fourth wheel. Again, under the microscope, that jaw looks okay. And now we're on to the bridge in this movement. You know, just having a little look at the screws, just so I know where they go back to. I'm going to have to take off the cannon pinion just like that. And then we can remove that centre wheel. And the fourth wheel. And then we can take off the barrel bridge. Now we are going to have to come back to that bridge remove the center wheel but i'm gonna have to use a staking set for that so in the meantime we'll continue taking off the barrel bridge so i'm just going to remove the screw for the winding stem And off comes the barrel bridge. Make sure there's nothing stuck to the end of the side. Here's your sliding clutch. Now the dial screws I'm just going to do up. make a start on the keyless works again I'm not too sure what that part is but it is to do with the setting of the time and winding the watch it's almost like it's got two yokes. Now this is a cover plate for the yoke spring. Now I am going to leave the yoke spring in. It's screwed down there. There's no point taking it out. It'll clean just as well. We are going to take this jewel out for the balance. A little bit tricky. There we go. And then we're going to use a punch, remove that center pin.
and we can lift that center wheel away and now time to open up the main spring barrel see the state of the main spring Definitely the original spring. More modern springs have an S shape to them. Oh, and that's the issue. So your main spring's not flat. And can you see that little bit at the bottom? That bit there should be attached and that catches into the barrel and what stops it spinning so with Nathan saying that he thought he had an issue winding it where the spring kept turning would have been correct there and then at some point it's just managed to latch itself on inside the barrel to be able to wind up So what we will do is replace that. But while we wait for that to come, we'll get everything into the baskets ready for the cleaner machine. So we've got ourselves a new mainspring. Just before I put that in, I'll drop a tiny t drop of oil. And the mainspring's already come pre-greased. And there'll be a coloured side which normally goes up and all you do is press it into the barrel now you didn't see too much of that on camera because all you could see a little bit like now was my fingers and thumbs now with the barrel arbor in we can put the lid on This little tool just helps to pre even pressure. Now that it's out the clean, uh, I'm just having a little look at these jewels, and as you can see there, we've got one that's broken. So I'll mark it on the other side. Again, that will come out once it's cleaned again. I'm just going to use this little jewel press. So I'm going to use this jeweling tool to remove the old jewel. Just selecting the right pusher. And just a bit of hand pressure has pushed that out. So I've gone ahead, got some new jewels. I couldn't get 
the exact size. These particular ones, they're the correct outer diam diameter, but the inner diameter is a little bit smaller. So I'm probably gonna have to make the stuff for that particular wheel a little thinner. So that's how the jewels come when you do order them. You'll normally get three. So as you can see there, the outer diameter is correct. So we'll just get that in, lay it flat, and then use this tool to close the hole up. Again, it really is quite hard to film. But all that does is it closes the brass up and holds that jewel in place. She's a bit of rodico to clear anything away, any little shards. Make sure it's secure. And then we'll see about the wheel fitting. And as you can see there, that's that pinion is too big for the hole. So we're gonna alter it. And to do that, we'll use this Jakku tool and a burnisher. Again, I apologize for any rubbish camera angles. I am still learning and that's watchmaking, videography and editing. But what I'm doing at the minute with this wheel is to try and burnish the staff and that will make it a little bit thinner and harder and then hopefully it will go into the jewel hole and then to see if we've cracked it we'll put these wheels in starting with the escape wheel I do find this escape wheel fascinating It does mean there's one less part in the movement, no pallet fork. But I do believe the British watchmakers believed it was inferior. Put the fourth wheel in and that bridge. And once we've got this screwed down, we can try that wheel we've just adjusted. There. Fits nicely. A little drop of oil on the center wheel. Then we can get the bridge on and make sure these wheels run freely.
So that's that jewel su successfully replaced. All we can do is carry on assembling the rest of the movement. Dropping a little oil onto the arbor. Previous to that, a little oil on the hole. We can put the bridge back on. Now, this part is to do with the setting of the time. So on most watches you pull out the, the crown and you turn the hands that way. On this particular movement, just to the side, there's a, almost like a little button to press. So when you press that down, it engages the yoke and then you can turn the crown to set the time. Continue by installing the reversing wheel. Add a little drop of oil. And then that conical washer. Get the screw in there. And then we can go ahead, get it tightened down. And then we can put the ratchet wheel on. Again, that conical shaped nut. Just hand tighten it with my finger, and then use those tweezers just to snug it up. And we can put this big beefy click spring back in. We can get the click in.
Now I don't script any of these videos and I sometimes forget that I'm filming while I'm doing the works. So just to give you a, a little insight as to how I work doing these videos. I will literally set the cameras rolling, dismantle them or start assembling. And I kind of do go into my own little world. So there are times where I forget about the cameras, I forget about camera angles, and then it's a little bit too late. I know I could maybe backtrack, but again, it's more about documenting the process I'm going through. Now, hopefully, as the years go on, you'll see the improvements. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Screw down the setting yoke. You've just seen me put the winding pinion and the clutch in. I'm just gonna put this plate over the yoke spring. This little jar has got some Persian bee dip in it and that's for cleaning jewels and those sort of parts. You've just seen me drop a little bit of oil. That wasn't actually a jewel, it was a plate. But for all intents and purposes, you've still got to oil it as if it was a jewel. Now we can move on to the scary part, and that's the balance. So to oil that, we need to take out this pin, remove the spring from the hole, and then we can lift the wheel away. I'm just gonna show, can you see that slot? That's what interacts with the escape wheel. And you can also see there that bottom pivot is bent. So I'm going to tell you now, it, it will probably run, but it won't run very well. You know, I don't know this particular movement so I can't order any parts like I say I have ordered a donor movement but that was purely on the look of the movement they looked identical when it gets here yeah it could be bigger smaller or I could have strike lucky and it could be perfect But this is quite unusual for this capsule. You see some work's been done. Looks like the hole's been widened a little in order to be able to just sit a jewel in like that. Drop of oil in the middle. So 
So yeah, that balance wheel pivot is going to stop it running well. Now, I don't want to try and straighten it because if I break it, it's broke. I can't fix it. So I think this could be a revisit. I do plan in the very near future on getting a lathe and I'm going to have a go at making my own parts. So maybe that's something I could have a go at. But in the meantime, we're just going to forge on ahead, reinstall the balance, put the spring back in the hole, and then push in this pin. put it into the movement see what happens now the thing with these cylinder escapement movements is they won't start up on their own you have to give them a helping hand with a pallet fork as soon as you put the balance in usually it will fire straight up this particular one, I'm going to give it a bit of a wind and then a bit of a kick. Coronade. There you go. So we've got it running again. partial success I'm just going to go ahead oil the jewels turn it over oil the jewels this side We've got this center pin to put in. Drop a bit of oil on this stem of that first. Oop. Push that down. Now we'll put the can and pinion on. Now what we're going to have to do is support the pin from underneath and then I'm just going to use a stake to press the can and pinion into place just like that. minute wheel and the hour wheel dial washer and then we can put the dial on now again I've done nothing to the dial it's clean looks absolutely beautiful I've given it a rub over with a bit of Rodico. Give these screws a, 
it'll quarter turn. I'll stop the dial from coming out. Now it's time to put the hands on. Now, bit of hindsight, I should have just put it into the case first. So you'll see me put this hour and um, and then I'll need to put the winding stem in in order to put it at exactly 12. So this is that little button that I was talking about earlier. You have to press this down in order to set the time. Just a little bit of jiggery-pokery, get it in the case, there we are, and we can put the stem in, turn it over, we'll get that screw tightened, And then that way, I could set the time. I think the camera angle makes those hands look slightly off. But they are under the microscope central. And pressed into place. And then we'll make sure they don't foul on each other. And get rid of any little dust particles, fibres. get the crystal back on and there we have it a semi success it's running not as well as it could be but like I say, this might be a job to revisit. I'm just gonna open up the back again, just to show you it's still running. Now, I did get that donor movement through, but unfortunately, it was just a fraction too big. I'll close that too and I will show you in a second but the donor movement I ordered is a, a die for instance but as you can see there that's the donor movement it's got the, the gold to the dials and for all intents and purposes looks exactly the same but like I say, it is a fraction too big. I'm just pointing out there. That's the the Stey, for instance, mark, I believe. But what I have done is I've made a nice little leather case for it to to live in. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like, and I'll see you on the next one.